Hi, my name is Tom Mavro and welcome to the Cut It TV training channel. The channel has been set up to provide easy to follow training tutorials in today's key media production software. Cut It itself is a UK based training company with over 15 years experience providing hands on training in media production. If you would like any further information about our training services, please visit our website at www.cut-it.tv or check us out on social media. I hope you enjoy the following tutorial. Once you've made any bigger refinements, such as moving clips uh, and or deleting clips from the timeline, the next part of the edit process involves trimming down the sequence and refining the clips that are there to optimize your edit. There are seven main tools on the Premiere Pro toolbar that allow you to refine clips that are already on a sequence. The first tool I'm going to mention is the arrow tool. Up to now we've been using the arrow tool for pretty much everything. The arrow tool allows you to select clips allows you to move clips, shuffle the clip order, and also using backspace to delete clips. It also allows you to trim the ends of clips. If I take the arrow tool, move over the start or the end of the clip, the symbol for the arrow tool changes into a red bracket symbol. Notice that there is an arrow on this symbol, and the arrow points into the clip that is going to be affected by the tool. So pointing this way, it's going to be picking up the start of this clip here. Pointing this way, it's picking up the end of this clip here. If I move to the start of the clip, click with my mouse and drag, the clip is trimmed. As you can see, it's trimmed frames off the start of the clip. As you can also see, it's left a gap. I'm just going to undo that again. If I move over the end of the clip, do the same thing, drag inwards like that. Again, it's trimmed the end of the clip, amending its out point, and again, it's left a gap. So the first disadvantage of using the arrow tool to trim a clip is that it leaves gaps. If I want to extend the clip, the arrow tool will also allow me to do so, but only where I have a gap or space on the timeline to extend the clip into. As I hit the end of the gap here, it won't let me go any further without moving any clips that are already on the timeline to make room for the additional footage I'm adding to the clip I'm extending. So this is the second bigger disadvantage of using the arrow tool to trim clips. There is though a tool that's specifically designed to do the same job but get around the problem of leaving gaps or having to create a gap to extend the clip into. The tool is known as the Ripple Edit Tool, or for the Ripple Tool for short, and its keyboard shortcut is B. The Ripple Tool works pretty much in exactly the same way as the Arrow Tool in terms of trimming clips. The symbol is slightly different. As you can see, while my mouse is in the middle of the clip, it has a red line through it, indicating that it's not going to function. As I get to the end of the clip, it changes into a bracket symbol again, but this time a yellow bracket symbol. Just like the Arrow Tool, the arrow on the bracket symbol points into the clip that's going to be affected and will change direction as you move from one side of an edit to another. Let's trim the end of this clip. If I move to the end of the clip, as you can see, my symbol changes to the yellow bracket symbol again. I'm going to click down with the mouse. I'm going to drag. This time, when I let go, though, all of the other clips on the timeline are pulled or rippled along to close the gap that would have been created. If I go the other way and extend the clip, all the other clips on the timeline now get pushed up to accommodate the frames I've added to the end of the clip. If I move over the start of the clip and trim in this time, the clip itself and everything after it gets shifted along to close the gap that would have been created, or if I extend the clip, the clip itself and everything else get pushed up the timeline to accommodate the new frames. As I'm trimming a clip, underneath the clip, I get a timecode readout that shows me the new duration of the clip and also how many frames and seconds I'm trimming or extending the clip by. Don't be fooled here by thinking the plus number there means that I'm always adding frames or minus means I'm always subtracting frames. 
The plus and the minus indicate which direction I'm dragging in. So if I'm dragging to the right, it's a plus. If I'm dragging to the left, it's a minus. If I move to the start of the clip, as you can see by dragging in a plus direction, the duration of the clip is being reduced. As I drag in a minus direction, the duration is being increased. Another thing to mention is as you're trimming the clip in the program monitor, you get a two up display. So this is showing me on the left hand window the new out frame of the clip I'm trimming in relation to the in frame of the clip that follows. If I move to the in frame of the clip that's followed and amend that, you'll see the right hand window is now changing and showing me the new in frame of that clip in relation to the out frame of the clip before it on the timeline. Now using the ripple tool is very handy for making larger amendments to a clip on the timeline. However, there are also times where you'll want to make a very fine tune to an edit. Maybe add a frame or take a frame off the start or the end of a clip. The first method is by using the ripple tool, uh, but you inevitably have to zoom in quite closely to be able to extend or trim the clip by just a single frame. Right, let me just zoom in there. I can now pick up the end of the clip. I can take a frame off or add a frame to the end of the clip. As I'm zoomed out, particularly with snapping on, that becomes quite difficult. As you can see there now, it's only allowing me to do 24 frames or 16 frames at a time. So there is a keyboard shortcut that will allow you to extend or trim the clip by a single frame at a time. What you do is you highlight the clip with the ripple tool, and then you hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and tap the right or left arrows on your keyboard and that trims or extends the clip by a single frame at a time. If you hold down shift as well that will trim by five frames at a time. On a PC the shortcut is slightly different as it uses the control key and the left and right arrows as opposed to the alt stroke option key and left and right arrows. There is one more really useful keyboard shortcut to trim clips on the timeline. This shortcut only works on the video one and audio one tracks. It also only works in terms of trimming a clip in rather than extending it, making it shorter rather than making it longer. But as the most common trim to want to do is usually making a clip shorter and also as you almost always inevitably end up creating an initial sequence on the video one track, this is a really handy shortcut to know. What you do is you line up your playhead inside the clip where you want to trim the in or the out point to. In this case, I'm going to trim the in point to where the playhead is. And then to trim the in point, you hit Q on your keyboard and that trims the in point to the playhead position. Just let me undo that again. If I want to trim the out point to the playhead position, again, I move my playhead to where I want the clip to end and hit W on my keyboard and that will ripple trim the end of the clip. To the playhead position. Using these methods you can very quickly trim down an initial sequence. In terms of trimming down a sequence these three methods allow you very quickly to trim down the start or the end of clips. However what they don't allow you to do is to take out the middle section of a clip. So let's just look at how to address that. This is where the next tool that we're going to look at comes into play, the razor tool. The razor tool allows you to move over a clip, line up the playhead with the start of the section you want to get rid of and click and it cuts the clip into two sections. If you then line up the razor tool again with the end of the section that you want to get rid of and click again that will make another cut. You then switch back to the arrow tool, click on the section in the middle of the clip that you want to get rid of and do a ripple delete. An alternative method of doing this is using yet again a keyboard shortcut. For this method you line up the playhead where you want to make the cut and then you either go to the sequence menu and choose add edit or use the keyboard shortcut for add edit which is command K on a Mac, control K on a PC. So just use the keyboard shortcut here and that makes a cut at the playhead position. You would then line your playhead up again with the next place that you wanted to make a cut, make a second cut, click on the middle section and ripple delete. The advantage of this method is you don't need to leave the arrow tool to do it, so it's very quick to then select and delete the portion of the clip that you want to get rid of. 
So trimming clips by using the ripple tool or the fine tune keyboard shortcut or using the Q and W keys on the initial video one track and also using the razor tool or the keyboard shortcut to delete sections of clips are all methods of taking an initial rough sequence and refining it down into a tightly edited sequence. Thank you. 